Yeah, hello, welcome back. Uh, I hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me. And much uh, more importantly, yeah. you can <laughs> see Harald o over there. And because uh, he is a guest and definitely more important than, than my face. Um, uh, so there are already some people. So great to see you again. So Harald, let us uh, simply start with you giving you uh, us some personal background. Oh, hello there, I'm Harald Lieske and I'm a freelance illustrator since 15 years now uh, and I'm mostly illustrating board and card games since then. Uh, I've, I've worked at about 100, uh, more than 100 board games up to now. Which is a huge number of course. Um, uh, it is. Um, so. Um, Please tell us also something about your gaming background and which games you personally prefer, not drawing them, but when you're playing games. What is your, what do you like most? Uh, I can't, I, I've no favorite game because it always depends on the uh, players you play with. Um, so it can be fun games uh, which just last 20 minutes or even could be heavy games which last two hours. It depends on, on the gamers on the table. I've been socialized with um, Catan, of course, and um, I've always loved playing games. Yeah, and we already have one question. Maybe we put this uh, a little bit um, later. Um, or, uh, Karthik, are you meaning... So the question is, what would you rate as your standout design? So, uh, Karthik, do you mean games that have been designed by Harald? Because some may not know that Harald is also a game designer. He has some published designs. Or do you mean, Karthik, any game that, that, uh, that has been published, which is his uh, favorite one? So, so, but Harald, maybe what is your favorite design that you did yourself? That I did myself? Who? Hard to say uh, as well. Um, I've uh, been, I've, I've published three board games: Wind und Wetter, Agora, which you did with uh, Spielworks, and uh, Gold der Inca. And I love them all. They are, these are so different games. Yeah. I'm, I'm not pick a favorite. Yeah. Okay. So. So all of the kids are, are the same. So and that was uh, uh, that was a question. So uh, Karthik was uh, asking for from your designs. Uh, so uh, and he's uh, thanking you for for the fast uh, response. But how did you become interested in in uh, drawings? Uh, so drawing in general, <coughs> and then working on games and, and doing illustrations. I I always loved drawing uh, as long as I can think. Um, it was uh, just a, a great way to express myself and I always loved playing, but I didn't get the connection between um, games and illustrating or drawing. And um, this happened when I moved to Münster um, to start my study at the uh, design school and um, I've, I've got a teach I've had a teacher um, uh, that was Max Cobbett who invented Das Verrückte Labyrinth. Yes. And I um, talked a lot about, uh, a, a lot with him about board games and inventing board games. And uh, he told me of the Göttinger Spieleautoren Treffen, mm -hmm. uh, a gamers fair, come on, authors fair. Yeah, uh, where, where uh, game designers can present <coughs> their prototypes. So, Game yes. designers picking their prototypes. It's a little bit like uh, for you uh, Americans, like Unpub, I think. So unpublished designs are there and there are lots of companies, gaming companies, and yes. looking at the games and some are immediately taken, but it's good for networking. Yeah. Yes. And this was uh, the point I started to invent board games. Uh, and of course, I illustrated my own prototypes. And uh, I went to Göttingen to this meeting for a couple of years. And um, yeah, there, uh, 
there I made the first con uh, contacts to publishers as well. And uh, it took about one year after this, um, I, I illustrated my first board game. So this was the start and this was the connection for me between illustration and board games. So, so it came pretty, pretty early, right? Or, or... Yeah, exact, exactly uh, 16 years ago, yeah. So, and as everybody sees, Harald is still young. So he started when he was uh, when he was ten. So <laughs> um, yeah, um, uh, and and there is uh, Stefan Risthaus, by the way, uh, Tigris, and he's uh, saying we are still talking about your Göttingen vacuum cleaner game. So yeah. <laughs> that game must be famous. So why did you never offer it to me? So <laughs> so. I I don't think it would fit into your program, to be honest. Yeah, well. yeah I, I love this idea uh, as well, but um, yeah, well, some things yeah. uh, come to fruition, some some don't. So that's that's natural. But Harald, you you have a special style in, in uh, gaming graphics. Uh, at least I'd say so. Um, yeah, I'm so, trying. Uh, yeah, well, what is your style in gaming? Graphics? What try? What do you try to do? Um, yeah. Uh, first of all, I don't think I have this one special style, uh, which is my uh, uh, own style. Um, I just uh, like to um, create another touch to to the illustrations, to the design of of board games. Um, I just try to find a way, um, perhaps some kind of unusual way, um, because there are so many board games out there, and maybe <laughs> too many for me to play. <laughs> uh, so I just try to uh, stand out in any way, and uh, there are lots of trends through the past years I've um, I've seen um, and I try not just to follow these trends uh, maybe to 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 get another perspective onto special themes or, or such um, and I try to keep my illustrations some kind of clear or maybe reduced uh, instead of Packing a full. Yeah, so, so let me bring up again uh, the Yinzi cover so that you see or, or when um, Harald is mentioning clear and especially reduced, you see this here. And um, that I think is Harald's style, although this is not completely true. As he just said, he can do a lots of different things. But this for Spielworks is a very special <coughs> thing in my and let us briefly move to up to now you always painted by hand so you yes. you are drawing by hand right on paper yeah yeah and um, th this is also uh, about I, I don't have one style because um, for some games i uh, just used acrylics or gouache, or watercolors, or ink. So um, I try to figure out uh, an, a known way for every game. Yeah, and, and, and this, uh, this I think uh, shows. I think this is really important. And now, my one of my pet peeves about gaming graphics. And let me uh, let me get one step back. I'm not thinking, not at all, that Spielworks is doing graphics that are better than other companies. No, that's not smart. No, me are, are the ones who decide on this, but we are doing different um, oh, graphics. Exactly. And this is not what it's about. It's about, sorry to interrupt you. No, no that's fine. Uh, um, for me, it's uh, just important to have a, a huge variety. So there are so many possibilities to illustrate 
something, a game or something else. And what I said about trends, um, I just, I've, I've got the impression um, uh, most of, it, of the illustrators try to follow special trends which are in. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that's a loss because there are so many possibilities to illustrate. Yeah. So I just love the variety. Yeah, and um, I, I agree. And my pet peeve is really that we are having uh, lots of really great gaming artists out there, illustrators, yeah. so the wonderful work. But you cannot really um, decide, is this a Hans and Glück game? Is it Ravensburg? Is it Cosmos? Because they all look the same. Uh, and my uh, example is always the car industry, uh, because here I know this is a BMW because of the front, or this is that uh, type. And we with Spielworks, and especially this is not really me, because I'm a, I'm a dilettante, so I'm a, I'm a pure amateur, it's a Harald's work. We try to be special, not better, but special, so, so that you uh, see this is a Spielworks uh, game. And if you see over Harald's uh, right shoulder over there, you see some games. So you see the difference in Kohle and Colony, Yinzi, La Granja. Uh, on, on top of it is Solarius Mission, it's Ground Floor, it's Sense of Time. You cannot say, well, all Spielworks games look the same. But when you have some experience, in my opinion, at least you know, oh, this is Spielworks. And of course, there is a cost. There is, uh, there is Gentes, which has, in my opinion, um, a brilliant uh, cover. And Stefan is a brilliant game, of course. And so this is, uh, I think, what what is important, and this is one of the reasons why we are talking here, right? Yeah. yeah. So you have to continue now. So. <laughs> no. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, another question, um, because there are so many flashy game designs out there, so graphic game designs. So you see lots of bright colors. Uh, wonderful games coming in from France with, with bright colors, from the mm. Far East, or from mm -hmm. our point of view, the Far East, so from, uh, from Asia. Um, wonderful uh, designs. But do you think it has been become more difficult to transport the Spielwerk style of games? Do you think more and more people are not getting it? Or where do you see some problems? Mm, yeah, indeed, and this is again about the, the trends. Uh, the my impression is that these trends I, I see for myself uh, are some kind of uh, very strong, so um, that uh, lots of people think this has to look like this or like this, but if it looks something completely different. Um, it's out of this, uh, some kind of out of this, of um, old school or, or whatever. And um, I think that's not quite right. And I think that's not quite fair yeah. as well. But, but our modern world, um, I, I agree 100% uh, first. And um, sometimes it's, it, it hurts when you are uh, getting these uh, comments. But it's also the nature of our modern world because uh, I'm saying graphically, I'm really an amateur, so I, I need to listen to hard. Of course, I have my own opinion. What, yes. is, uh, what I think is looking good and is looking not as good. But these days, you see a lot of people who immediately get out and say, well, this is bad and this is stupid. Uh, and this is not, of course, um, just uh, for and, uh, and there's, graphics. It's, it's and there's a huge, there's, there's a huge difference between this is not good and I don't like it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You're one hundred percent true. But these, especially in social media, there is no difference between this. So you you, yeah. you, you, you say something and then it's out. But we have a very interesting uh, question here um, again from Carpix. Thank you for this. When you start, Uli, when you start a new game project, how do you start in the discussion with Harald? Do you give him some direction or? Or it, it's, is it completely Harald's uh, ideas? So, Harald, do you want to uh, start here? How do we uh, work on a gaming project, a new one? 
Um, so at first we try to, to play the prototype so uh, I can get a better feeling of what it's about. And um, I've, I'm getting told the theme of the game. And uh, I just uh, move back and uh, take the impression of the game and the theme with me. And um, it starts to work in my head. And uh, this is uh, the normal process. I just um, imagine some pictures in my head and draw them down and uh, just show you scribbles and sketches and um, just to to ask if you think this could be a, a possible way to go with this game mm -hmm. yeah this is uh, this is uh, true just two days ago uh, harald and henning who is doing a lot of development for spielworks we played square and circle by matt wolf which by the way will be presented here at conworks tomorrow and we played it and harald took notes and took some photos so but Playing it also means a deeper understanding of how various parts work together. But uh, as Harald said, he just he then sends me some drafts, some scribbles, and it is. Although I'm an amateur, it could be that there are three different versions. Yeah. I'm saying to all three, no, I don't like it. And yeah. uh, then there is the next draft, and um, this is. Um, from there on, it's going back and forth. But let me guarantee you, that when Harold Harald is uh, giving me three drafts, it is rarely that I don't like um, any of them. So most of the time, there is something that is fantastic. And of course, yep. it's also a good thing that we are pretty close together. So we are 40 kilometers uh, um, apart, so we can meet in person. And in these days, where you can do everything by phone, by mail, by Skype, or whatever, it's still important to sit together when, uh, and uh, talk about something in person. So that, at least, is my opinion. But we could do it as well, because we some kind of match, I think. Yeah, well, sometimes, <laughs> yes, most of the time we are. <laughs> we, are we can also say we are quite weird, so this works well, well together. Um, uh, so let me see. Um, Oliver is um, asking a question for Harald. Do you keep a design diary? Um, it would be great to see some initial sketches and how the art changed over time until the final version. version. Uh, sometimes yes, most of the time no. Um, but um, a small hint, I'm still working on a new website. It's uh, um, I, it just takes too long for me because I can't do it uh, completely by my own. Um, and I will include some very few videos, making of videos. Mm, yeah, this is, yeah, and, and, and I'm not, not really <coughs> sure, uh, Harald, uh, if you should share everything. Because, yes, it could be once in a while, it, it could be nice, but sometimes it's so off the, the, uh, the beaten part that, that uh, for anybody who is even fami uh, familiar with a Finnish game, that it doesn't make that much uh, that much uh, sense. Yeah, and uh, Sebastian um, uh, is saying uh, this sounds familiar to how he interacted with Ian O'Toole when I asked him to design a logo for my open source project. Yeah, it, it's getting back and forth. And Sebastian, probably your difference is that Ian is living in Australia, so this had to be long distance. So here working on a game that needs to be played and which has so many different uh, components, I, I think it's good. It's definitely not necessary, but it's positive if, if uh, the graphic designer yes, is able to, to play the game. Yes, it is. Um, so, uh, a, a very broad question here. What is good uh, game graphics to you, Harald? What, what is good game graphics in your opinion? Uh, first of all, functional. So um, this doesn't mean uh, if it's reduced size or if it's full with details, uh, that's not the matter. It's just how it, it works um, during the play, during the, the gameplay. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't like uh, games which are uh, over-illustrated, which uh, 
can happen. So uh, that you have to search for spaces on the uh, game board, for example. Um, I, I think it should be clear where you can do what and um, to, to make it easier to, to understand the, the gameplay. Game board still is a game board. It's not a, f a map of the physical world, so it needs to be functional. If, if it's not functional, then it's not nothing. But of course, if it con can is able to convey the the, the flavor uh, in a better way, then this immersion factor that is so important in modern uh, gaming is easier to to achieve. And then uh, Daniel is saying Agra had that problem. Looks nice, uh, looks nice, but it's um, there's a lot uh, to be seen, and you can't really digest it. And there are spots that you are totally missing. And uh. Oliver is asking, what game was the hardest to make illustrations for? Do you can you mention this? Do you know this? What was the hardest you ever worked on? Oh, Uh, there, yeah, illustrating a, a game is, is about so many different parts. Uh, it has an illustrative part and it also has a very technical part. So I um, have to differ this um, because that's why it's very hard to answer this question. Um, the first step in illustrating a board game is for me uh, to construct uh, punch boards, if there are any. And um, uh, we've done Orc Ride, for example, which has uh, 11 punch boards, I think. Stefan which will, will co contradict you if, if it's not true in a second. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, hundreds of tiles, for sure. And uh, this was very hard work to um, construct these punch boards. Because uh, when I finished all 11 punch boards, I just showed them to you and Henning, and you mentioned, mm, there's missing one tile. <laughs> so consequence for me was I had to uh, construct all 11 punch boards again, which takes uh, several days at last. Yeah, I remember that, that, although I, I had forgotten about this. So, so thank you for bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> Question brought it back for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, uh, but Karthik has a follow up question here. How much more difficult is it to make language independent, so language independent artwork? Is it a lot more difficult for you, Harald, or is it? It depends, depends on the game. Uh, um, it can be very hard, but it can be also very easy. It depends absolutely on the uh, game and the mechanics. And uh, this is a, a point of uh, symbols, mm -hmm. which is a very own part, again, in, in illustrating board games. Um, and this is a part I, I don't do completely by my own. We are doing these together. Um, it depends how many symbols are there, and if it's uh, if it does make sense to use symbols um, or text. So if you've got forty different symbols, it doesn't make sense. So you should use text instead. Yeah, and, and especially some small games. So the very popular race for the galaxy, of course, is it's. it's if you look at it, it's a symbol and icon nightmare for mm -hmm. the player. But you can play this game. Uh, it, it's a quick playing game, and it's so brilliant. And you play it over and over again. So after a short while, you know all the icons and symbols. Yeah. So it's still okay. <coughs> but let's say there is um, a game that plays for two or two and a half hours and has only symbols and icons, and which you maybe play once a quarter then, of course, you need to restart and relearn all this. So language is an important part in gaming. But, of course, the reality these days is the print runs of all games, even of larger publishers, they are going down and down. They decrease. So everybody tries to have as many components language independent. And 
for function uh, for functionality it's it's not really a good thing it depends how much space you have as well maybe on cards for example yeah absolutely and by the way stefan is contradicting you it wasn't it weren't 11 punch boards <laughs> 12. 12. Okay. So, more work, so it hurts even more. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, Oliver is saying, I guess artwork for a game board or player board is hard because the art can't be too prominent or you can't see what's going on and so on. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely yes. true. Yeah. Um, can you tell us, Harald, on which projects you are currently working? So, what are you doing right now? I've currently finished uh, For You for 2F games mm -hmm. and I'm currently working for two games for Spielworks, Taros and uh, Squaring Circleville. Um, I'm also working for another game as well, but I'm not allowed to, to say anything about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's absolutely usual that I'm working on several games at the same time. Yeah, and th there was exactly at that moment when you said so, there was a question uh, if you are working on multiple projects at the same time, but you already answered this, so yes. I, I have to because um, there are uh, a few dates through the year for, for publishers or when they want to have the, the final games. And, uh, for example, the Spiel in Essen, which doesn't take place this year, but um, usually it does. And, um, of course, all publishers want to have their game ready for this fair. And so uh, there's no other way to, to uh, work on multiple projects at the same time. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is the nature of the beast. And, um, yeah. That's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I like it too, so that I can uh, shovel more work to, to Ara, so he can do more at the same, <laughs> at the same time. Um, and by the way, I see Andre here, so the local rooster, the resident rooster from, from Hagen. So uh, hi, uh, Andre. Um, good to see you here in, in, in time for, uh, for Conworks. And um, I had two more questions or remarks, uh, comments here. Um, Daniel, so is here, so Daniel Newman. And he's thanking you for all your work on watch. So yeah, see, so oh, I love this project. Thank you. <laughs> so some more um, good vibes from here. And uh, Andre is already saying nur der IEC. That's uh, that's true. And Oliver from Table Games Block. So let me just scroll back. Tabletop Games Block. Sorry, Oliver. Uh, he would like to have you at a certain time when you have time. Uh, interview you. I think this okay. would be a wonderful thing. So, uh, Oliver, please get in touch with Harald to, um, and afterwards, and I'm sure that he will. Yes, feel free. He will, yeah, he will talk to you. Um, <laughs> any any more questions here, um, or is this for now done? So we are running for thirty minutes. Harald, do you have anything that you'd like to to mention at this point? Mm. Thank you all for your interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and, uh, but um, Ode is asking, when is your, because some people may not know um, that Harald is also, of course, uh, playing in a band. So he is asking, when is the new uh, CD do you? So is there, are you recording uh, right now or is it Corona times? Is it not possible? No, I, album is fish, finished and um, mixed and mastered everything. Uh, we just uh, um, thinking about finding a new label. Um, yeah, it, it just it, it will still take some time, but um, by the way, it's all finished yet. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll see. So also in, in music, there will be something uh, coming out from him. Um, I don't Stuck. think so. I, I don't think so. Karthik, I will ask this question, but I know uh, and already know the answer. But Harald, are you a hockey fan too? No. <laughs> yeah. Too, too fast, too fast for me. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> no. 
Um, yeah, uh, so uh, first, thank you, Harald. Please stay with me here for, for a minute. Um, at about six o'clock, so in 14 minutes, um, Claude and Steffen and I will play online a game of the Grand Trunk Journey. So if you are, would like to watch, you can do so. You can even bet on the winner and can, uh, may win a free game in this uh, affair. And um, thank you for being here, Harald, being my uh, guest at uh, Conworks. And we will talk next week anyway about two projects that you already yeah. mentioned, Taros and Squaring Circle will, and both of these games will be featured tomorrow at Conworks. One last remark, I try to pause this again, but I'm not sure if I'm, uh, if I'm able to do so. I'm probably too stupid. So you may have to reload uh, the stream, I'm, uh, I'm afraid, if you would like to watch the game where I'm trashed in a couple of minutes. Okay? Okay. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Harald. Talk to you all <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah.